Hi guys, it's Kathleen here. I'm a homeschool graduate, a homeschool mom, and a learning enthusiast, and the mom of a gifted four-year-old. So today I'd like to show you what I am currently planning on doing with my four-year-old son for at least the next six months, because we're having to adjust on a case-by-case -case basis. So I put out a previous video already of the homeschool hall, which was just totally for him to open and enjoy. What I've got behind me on the table are some things that we're in the middle of because we do school year round, and also some things that I'm gonna start adding in after we're rotating off some of these things. So I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can take a look. One other thing I forgot to mention before we look at what I have on the table. It is a lot, I recognize that, but we only do school about an hour a day, maybe a little bit more, and at least half of that is always reading. So actual formal school, sit down at the table and do work, maximum of 30 minutes. I cap us at that. And sometimes even shorter if I can tell he doesn't have a good attention span that day. Reading takes up most of this and he will be happily reading for 30 minutes to an hour if I let him. Depends on how long his sister is down for a nap. So the reading portion he is the catalyst for and he keeps asking for more. So I've got a ton of books here so that he can get more reading, get more information. Okay, let's get into it. This is everything that I have picked out that we're going to do in the next six months-ish to a year. Um, I don't know how fast we're going to go through all of this, and yes, it is a lot. But I'm going to explain why I have everything picked out and um, a bit how I use it more. So highlight, sunlight I picked out when I just found out Stephen was gifted. It is sunlight level P, so pre-K suggested for four and five-year-olds. We started this when he was a little over three and a half. Um, that is not working for us because he wants to go through the material much faster than is on their schedule. So I use their schedule more as a checklist, and we're never on the same week. And if you're interested in more about how I'm modifying the sunlight for him, I can make a video on that. So just put that down in the comments. But we've been going through that for about uh, four months now at our own pace. We don't always do sunlight every day for school because quite honestly, the earlier books were not as interesting to him as some of the other books that I've been getting. So in the middle of sunlight, I decided to switch course because this was just not enough for Stephen. It was not satisfying enough for his curious mind. Um, I have switched to building my own curriculum, which is at the other end of the table, and it uses mostly library books and YouTube videos and other activities that I put together. So I'll explain that at the end, so stick around for that. Um, but sunlight, we're just, we're doing, we're getting through at our own pace, some books much faster than others. I am just using it as a supplement at this point. And I know that sounds weird because it's sunlight, but honestly for Steven, that's what he needs. The other thing I wanted to mention before we get too far into this is how much time it actually takes. So I put this schedule to him for, together for him a few weeks ago once I got new stuff and started reading with him. Um, but just because there's a ton here does not make mean that we're doing school for four hours a day. He is four, and I'm very, very aware of that. So we are keeping things very four friendly and short. So that is why even though All About Reading recommends 20 minutes of work, I'm doing it five to 10 minutes of work because that is the attention span that he needs. Plus, we're leaving out a ton of stuff. Same thing for Right Start Math. I'm leaving out a ton of stuff, so we're doing it in short amount of times, and it's just introducing new concepts. And this is his. He can use a dry rake marker to check off what he's doing every day. And, and, as, and as you can see, last week, we did not do everything every day. And I chose not to do reading on Thursday because I wanted to get to math since we only did math once that week. That's how we roll. Um, Friday, I always try to do fun day or extra day, and yesterday I asked him if he wanted to do school. He said no. He had other projects he wanted to do, so I let him do that, and I went and did my own thing. Um, we did read to him in the evening, so that is checked off, but it wasn't formal sitting down 30 minutes of school time that we would normally do when his sister's asleep. Okay, so in our book basket, 
in addition to sunlight, there's a few things that I put in my video haul from a couple weeks ago. So that's in here, um, and he's been loving doing that. We do it casually. The Apologia Science Curriculum for Preschool I also got when I just found out he was gifted. And quite honestly, we could have gone through it within one month. He loves science that much. I've been doing it slowly because we have tons more to read. And I've been trying to mix it up so that we do some of the activities in the back instead of reading for that day. And he absolutely loves the science experiments and activities. The preschool style cut and paste, not so much. That's more like busy work to him. So we've been skipping that. This is a little bit below his level, but I wanted to start with this so I could get a feel of the Apology curriculum. And um, I'll comment more on where we're going with Apology in a little bit later in the video, so stick around for that. Also in this box is this book that I mentioned in my previous video. The kids have been absolutely loving it. So yes, it's the Sleeping Beauty story, but we went through like exactly what the music is communicating here. The trumpets are the sound of the prince and the, the theme for the lilac fairy, the theme for the evil fairy, what the each piece of music is trying to communicate. Stephen loved it. Um, he always loves classical music and actually now we are listening and watching the ballet on YouTube during snack time. Both my kids make sure to remind me, mom, can you put up the ballet? And well, my daughter doesn't really talk that well yet, but she always is very enthusiastic when I pull up the ballet dancers for her to watch. Um, most of the rest of this is sunlight in here or just references for the other core I was talking about. Um, so more on that in a bit. Very aware that sunlight has math in it, to be, but to be frank, the math they put in here was way too easy for him. It's just learning to subitize and learning to recognize numbers and learning place values, which the place value, yes, he's working on, but the sunlight math is not enough. So I never planned on doing that. What I chose to do instead is right start math. This is a kindergarten slash first grade level math that we are, let's see, how many weeks are we into it? We're at lesson 50. Um, and he's been loving this, loving all the manipulatives that come with it. He has been flying through it. And when I do a lesson, I modify it exceedingly for him. So if you want an insight more into exactly um, the breakdown of how we're doing this for an actual lesson, put that down in the comments. I'd be happy to show you a video that um, of us going through the lesson so you can see a little bit better how we're doing that. But this is exactly what I needed for a four-year-old because I don't want to put writing in with his math right now. We have started um, all about reading. As expected, the first week was struggle because it was a new concept and he just didn't want to attempt trying to sound out the letters. So I switched. I modeled for the entire week on how to read. And um, this week he did read by himself. Um, I'm curious to see how he does with this curriculum for the rest of the year. I don't know if we're going to finish it all um, because there may come a point where he's just reading so fluently that I don't need it. Um, I may just get out the teacher's manual to help him learn new rules, but we'll see. Okay, so that's reading. Um, and Quite honestly, I don't consider math and reading our core subjects. That's something we tack on because he's ready for it and we're doing a little bit at a time at his own pace. Um, before I get to the core subjects, let me just do the supplements. We have the workbooks that he's been loving, um, thinking skills. He loves the logic puzzles in here, trying to figure out what's next. He has been enjoying the beginning coding. It's a little bit too easy for him, but he likes um, the logic part of it. He has really, really been wanting to learn how to play the piano. And I've attempted to sit down with him a couple times to teach him, but I didn't think he was ready. So I finally got this. I heard about this book, Wonder Keys, 
designed for a younger child and it's not your typical, it, it's not your classic learn to play the piano book. So we'll see. I, I don't know quite when I'm going to do this because he's been sitting down at the piano with my old John Thompson teaching finger, little fingers to play all in the zone exploring with that so I know he's interested but I don't want to add this as a stressor to me and having to fight his sister to stay off the keyboard when we're doing piano lessons so I haven't figured out when we'll put this in there um, and it may just be something that we sit down for a minute after dinner when my husband can entertain my 18 month old so Steve and I can have a little bit of time with this now, I mentioned that Stephen absolutely loves science. These are some of the things that I have bought since he was born. These were the first science books that I got for him, and I just got them out again for my 18-month-old. She loves looking at the pictures. He loves learning about the animals. So we have started reading through these again, um, probably like 10 pages at a time reading bits for my 18 month old to just hear vocabulary but steven's been loving these um so we're going to go back through all of these again and then we have usborne lift the flat books which i got i think all of these used so none of them were brand new and i've gathered these over the last couple years and i thought since i don't have a set science curriculum we're just going to go back through these and these are once again a bit more involved so talking about how exactly um, the machines work the forces work getting inside some of the physics of it the body book again is amazing talking about how the body works um, this is probably a little bit simple for him if I'm gonna be honest but I have another book down here, the Usborne Human Body Book, which we've gone through before, but just a spread of those a day. Um, he's loving. He'll, he'll just love any tidbits I can get um, giving him more about science. Now, I mentioned Apologia. The preschool science curriculum was great. He was responding very well to the science. I was looking for something more independent for him, though, because I cannot sit and read to him four hours a day. So I got the astronomy textbook. Um, and actually, let me go grab that. Okay, so I got the astronomy textbook and the MP3 that goes along with it. At breakfast, we sat down with this book, and I turned on the audiobook, and just put this up on, like, a stand, and... Um, kind of showed him how he could hear when it changes to the next section in this in the audiobook i thought oh we'll try it it might be a bit wordy for him because he was only three when we started this he loved it so much he made me keep the audiobook on and it kept him busy for two hours of the morning he he took it to my bedroom and closed the door so his sister wouldn't bother him and just stayed on my bed listening to a significant portion of the book. He loved it so much that um, I decided, hey, let's get some more books. Because he was done with this probably about after a month. I think he listened to it, maybe a month and a half. Because I think he listened to it like eight times through. Um, on his own initiative. This is actually what he started recommending, requesting at lunchtime because I get, let him choose what we listen to during lunch. So when he was loving this so much, I asked him, do you want to listen to earth science, botany, or flying animals next? I told him he could too, choose two. So he chose botany and earth science. And again, I got these books used and we'll get the MP3 and... I am going to probably pull out either earth science or botany. I'll let him choose. Pull it out probably in another month. So there's some spacing in between these two. Um, and again, just give it to him so he can listen in his own time. And that will give him extra science so he can enjoy. So I realized that this video was getting a little bit too long. So what I'm going to do is break it up into two. I'm going to give you a quick insight into the curriculum, the core curriculum that I'm creating. And then there's going to be a separate video 
just explaining the curriculum and how we're doing all of it. So in the background here we have my son because the um, this video is recorded later in the day so he's sitting here playing Legos while I am finishing the rest of this. We have Lego Man here down at this end working on his project um, while I'm telling you all this. But this is really the core of our curriculum. This is what we spend honestly most of our school time on doing. This is our library basket and we go through all of these books in a week, reading them multiple times. Um, actually, there's some from our own shelves in here, as well as a few leftovers from the core that I'm putting together. And that is the final piece here. We are doing a around the world with picture books, but it's not just the world. It is cultures, it is technology, it is food, it is science. We're exploring region by region the cultures and just a little bit of an example in this video and then if you're interested in more about the pieces of that go check out the next video that I'm doing which will explain everything in a lot more detail. But for this section here it was Korea so we have a book on tigers that um, highlights the importance of tigers for the Korean culture and how revered they are. We have a book translated from Korean into English that talks about different people on the subway and what their lives look like. Um, a little boy going to visit his mom's hometown in Korea and seeing how her village has changed over the years. And in the middle of all this, we have things like learning about electricity in connection with computers because Samsung is Korean. So we learned electricity, we learned circuits, we learned a little bit of computers here. With this book, it's all about some of the traditions for Korean dance. And so we watched some YouTube videos in Korean dance. And of course, there's Korean food. We explore all these things. And this is where we get most the fun. Um, we read one or two picture books a day. We read Stephen's selections from this basket as well as a couple I pull and that completes probably 30-45 minutes of reading um, when you add in the like 5-10 minutes of sunlight that we do as well. And then the rest of the day, they can pull stuff out of here at their will. So like we were just doing Mongolia last week. So this book is in here in case he wants to read it again. He can just pull it out. And that's what he did with this one. He had me read it every single day for two weeks because he loved this book so much. That is what we're doing for school. It is a lot. But as I said, we're doing little bits each day just because that's where he is at. And modifying is needed. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments and I'd be happy to answer them for you.